The ripples of a no-deal Brexit would spread far, but they'd start here, in Dover, the busiest port in the United Kingdom. On a clear day, you can see France from the top of Dover's White Cliffs. Calais is 21 miles away, two ports intrinsically linked by the Channel, by history, and now by Brexit. £120 billion pounds worth of goods come through Dover every year, a sixth of our imports brought through these gates and sent off around the country. For years we've taken it for granted, but now you might wonder what happens here if we leave Europe without a deal. Well, every day about 10,000 lorries come through the port of Dover. It's a very efficient place, it only takes about a minute to go from this point when they get off the ferry to leaving the dock. But if a hard Brexit means more customs checks, that'll mean more time added to the process and very quickly that could gum up the whole port. And here's the proof. This is the effect of Operation Stack. Miles of lorries being parked on the motorways between London and Dover. And this is what happens when you get delays, no, not in Dover, but in Calais. Now for Brexit, a new contingency plan. These are the preparations for Operation Brock, a 13 mile stretch of the M20 being converted into a lorry park for 2,000 vehicles headed across the channel. For the British haulage industry, a no-deal Brexit would create unprecedented disruption. There'd be an immediate visible effect of any border checks. Uh, there would be queues tailing back on the approach motorways, the M20, the other connecting motorways with the M20, including possibly the M25. Uh, very substantial delays, very dis substantial disruption. Uh, and, and that would feel to all of us like a really big impact on the economy and the way that Britain has got used to working over the last 20 or 30 years or so. These lorries are all coming into Britain on ferries and through the Eurotunnel, normally to tight timetables. Much of British business operates on the principle of just in time. Products arriving at their destination at the very moment they're needed. At this food storage warehouse in Corby, they're building vast new areas to keep frozen produce. Capacity here will more than double in time for the end of March, all to help companies stockpile food. Rob Hardy's a veteran of Eurotunnel and the ferry business. He says Brexit will mean playing to a different set of rules, and that makes disruption inevitable even if the British government does all it can to ease the way for lorries coming into our ports. On imports, our club, our rules, but exports uh, back to the EU, it's a common sort of stereotypical response that the French might be awkward. In fact, I don't think they will be awkward, they'll just be doing what the EU rules are, is that when the, when the vehicle appears at the first European border point, it has to be checked completely in order to enter Europe. They're not doing anything wrong. They, they've said publicly that they won't operate a go slow. Uh, they don't need to, there's enough to make it go slow. His advice is to be pragmatic for companies to start preparing now. The perfect storm is brewing in that the trucks are not able to get back out to reload to come back in again. And also European transport companies will start to say, I can't go to England with my goods because I don't come back. So if there's, a, if there's a break in that supply caused by the delay on export, there isn't anyone to bring the import in. Now that, that might take five or six or ten days to manifest itself uh, and we need to be prepared for that. In Birmingham's wholesale market, the largest of its kind in the UK, they pride themselves on delivering fresh food. Any delay causes problems. That could mean major problems purely on the basis that if goods can't get to us and if suppliers feel that they don't want to send goods because of queues on the border, we're out of pocket, we haven't got goods to sell and if the goods do come here and they're not of the condition that they should be, we have to dump them. And who takes the hit on that? Is it us? Is it the sender? It's, it's, it's not a good deal in all fairness. And that's a fear expressed across the industry. One of Britain's biggest supermarkets told Sky News 
that it feared panic buying in the run-up to a no-deal Brexit. Some fresh food, it said, would run out within days. But this isn't just about food. It's about all the things that knit our nation together. Jo worries about the effects of Brexit. She's stockpiling supplies. But her focus isn't really on food. It's on health, on the medicine she needs for her daughter, Nora. Yum, 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 yum. She worries that delays at the border could mean that medicine she needs is delayed for days or even weeks. She suffers from severe epilepsy as well as she's got quad CP, cerebral palsy. Nora has lots of various medicines. Some of them I can work around, I can get generics, I can do all sorts with, or I can come up with a solution. However, she has three drugs that she has that are critical and without them, she will have multiple seizures in a day. She will be blue lighted to the hospital. She could suffer from far worse. It could be catastrophic. Um, I can't switch these drugs. I can't use another brand of these drugs. In search of reassurance, Joe and Nora have come to see their paediatrician, but they leave frustrated. How do you feel? How do I feel? Really, really, really worried. And at the moment, I just want an answer. I just, I want to know someone has a plan. I want to know that if the worst is going to happen, if we are going to have interrupted supplies, it's not going to affect me as a mum, and I won't notice. Or. I get three months' worth of supplies up front now so that I know that whatever happens, I'm OK. Because the consequences of Nora not having her epilepsy meds is absolutely terrifying. So is that reasonable? Could something as fundamental as medicine really run out? It's, it's absolutely critical that the pharmaceutical industry maintains supply to market. And the absolute worst case scenario would be that certain products are not available in, in certain markets, um, which might mean that patients have to switch to an alternative product or, uh, or something less effective. British society is a network of people, infrastructure and businesses. It's complex and normally robust, but it can be brought down by failure and by our own sense of panic. Disruption to fuel supplies has previously caused widespread panic buying. A bit of snow earlier this year saw shops being stripped of fresh food, and then there's this. This is 2018, it's the year that people dialed 999 because KFC ran out of chicken. The police are the ones who pick up the pieces when the system fails. Now they've laid out their fears of how a no-deal Brexit could push them to their limits. And imagine what will happen if we start to see food or med medical supply shortages. And we live in a liberal democracy. Protest is good. Protest is part of being a democracy. Where that moves into disorder, though, to violence, that's the concern. And where people can't feed themselves, potentially, where people can't get their insulin, potentially, it's a real concern that those protests might escalate into disorder. Do you think you can cope? Um, at the moment, no, I don't. He told me the police were considering asking for help from the military and also said that food shortages could result in rationing, something supermarkets say they are also contemplating. If the shelves on perishable goods are empty because of just in time and they can't get their perishable goods through, especially if you're not in a, a big city, I think we need to start considering how we manage demand one of the things that supermarkets might have to consider is informal rationing, so you can only have three bottles of milk, not a trolley full of milk, that sort of thing. And there are profound worries about policing in Northern Ireland, where the prospect of renewed border controls has heightened fears about simmering tension. Troubles have always been there since then, but the PS and I have been able to deal with them to the point that we don't hear about it on the mainland. But I think there is a volatility that bubbles away and both sides are clearly passionate about their view. And I think if either side saw their view being pushed to one side or being disadvantaged, there's a, a difficulty there, a potential difficulty that they might then express those views negatively. By which you mean trouble? Quite possibly, yeah. Those who are preparing for a no-deal Brexit often mention uncertainty and anxiety. 
Sky News has spoken to dozens of companies, trade organisations and public bodies about a no-deal Brexit. All of them said the prospect made them nervous. But the really fundamental point about Brexit is that the United Kingdom is an island nation. And that creates challenges when it comes to imports and exports. So lots of the things that we use come in on trains or planes or, of course, on boats like this one. And that includes medicines and food and car parts, things we need in a real hurry. It could be a profound change, but one that's hard to prepare for. Some plan meticulously for no deal, some prefer to ignore it. But the people who are preparing, is, is uh, the percentage is growing, but it's still probably not half. And there are still companies that I see who just say, uh, I'm not worried, it's not going to happen. Uh, and I've, I've kind of likened it to the seven stages of grief. And there are still, some people are still in the denial phase. And honestly, when you look at the seven stages of grief, because I have, because I, I covered it on a, in a seminar, is that that is the project plan for Brexit. It's, you've got to go through this acceptance, you go through the denial, the acceptance, the realisation and then, the, and then the moving on. Most people I spoke to about planning for a no-deal Brexit did not want to speak in public for fear of being accused of scaremongery. But there is nervousness across much of British society, a fear of the unknown and what it will bring. And as Brexit gets nearer, that anxiety is growing.